Hello everyone, this is lecture 16 modeling with differential equations. Um, we have learned different models so far in this course. We have discrete models, so we have empirical models, um, we have stochastic models. That, so for empirical models, um, when we use this particular approach, the idea is to fit a curve through a set of data and then to use this curve in order to predict outcomes where there are no data. Okay. So the disadvantage of this particular model is that we cannot be confident that the formula applies outside the range of the data considered. Okay. Um, we also learned about stochastic models or the probabilistic model. Um, we use this method to um, estimate the probability of certain outcomes based on the available data. Um, and we also, of course, learned about discrete model. So we take into account discrete model when the behavior of certain model be, um, is taking place over a discrete time period. Right? And most of the time we use difference equations to, um, to model the, um, the discrete time period. Uh, in this lecture, we're going to focus on the continuous time um, period instead of discrete time period and to model the uh, problem related to continuous time period, we're going to use something called differential equations. Um, so the idea is just to build up some models and then we're going to look at the solution without actually solve or for really solve for the solution of the general model. Um, by looking at the solutions, we are um, gonna give you the solutions. There's one particular case, we solve the solution, but that, that's all for um, the solving part, right? We look for the solution of exponential functions that we're gonna look a little bit later. But most of the time, I'm gonna give you the functions or the solutions to the differential equations and we're going to estimate the outcome or estimate the time of certain problem. Um, and that's it. Right? Um, so the learning objectives of this particular lecture is to investigate the continuous population growth model. So you have seen the population growth model um, earlier in the month where we talk about discrete exponential growth and discrete logistic growth. Now, in this lecture, we're going to revisit those two particular problems, but for continuous time, because things always happen continuously in reality. But to develop a model related to a continuous time period, we still need the information that we learned from the previous discrete model or the uh, difference equations. Um, so let's get started here on um, the uh, motivation uh, example. So let P represent the number of people in a large population as some time T. Um, and um, then it is reasonable to assume that the rate of change of the population with respect to time depends on the current size of the population. So it makes sense, right? as well as all the factors. So all the factors in this particular case can mean a lot of things. Um, if you consider populations, it can be related to the birth rate, it can be related to the death rate, um, it can be related to migrations or immigration. Right? A lot of information can go into this particular word factor here. Um, so it is desirable to determine a relationship between the population P and a certain time T to make predictions about P in the future time frame. All right, so to come up with the continuous differential equations, um, we're gonna start with something basic, right? with the difference equations that we learned before. All right, so let P of T population psi at time t and p of t plus delta t be the population sign at time t plus delta t. All right. 
Now with this information, um, you can relay back into the different equations and the naming conventions that we use at the beginning of the course. That it can, so this P of T can be related to P of N, right? Or B sub N or P of N, right? And the P of T plus delta T can be related to P of N plus one. So it, right? So, um, the relationship between the continuous period time period and the discrete time period. All right. So the change in the populations, right? So the change in populations delta P during the time period delta T. Just the small change in time, okay? So the small change in time is denoted as delta T. So the change in the population is denoted as, or is given as, right? so delta P is equal to P plus of T plus delta T minus P of T. All right, so that's kind of related to the difference equations that we learned before. Um, in other words, if we relate uh, P of T plus delta T as P of N plus one and P of T as P of N, then this can be equal to P of N plus one minus P of N, right? So this thing kind of related to one another. Now assume that during this time period, the growth of the population is affected by the pre-productions only. So you get newborn into the um, populations. Okay. So now I have to make some assumptions. So assume that during this time period, the growth of the populations is affected um, by the pre-production then the change of the in populations is okay so delta p right so the change of the population at times t plus delta t minus the population at time t now is equal to the increasing number of populations in the time periods delta t. And k in this k is positive because you have um, new population introduced into, uh, into your model. Okay. Okay, so this is, um, so this change related to the increasing number of populations in a certain time period. Okay, now we're gonna rearrange the terms in the equation. So what I do, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide it both sides for delta T. So this is what I got, so delta P over delta T equal to P of T plus delta T minus P of T divided by delta t equal to k times p, right? And if you notice, right, if you notice this particular equations that we got right here, it's related to the change in the vertical directions over the change in the um, horizontal directions. Right? And if you learn what you learn in pre-calculus or calculus, this is the slope of the second line or the line going through two points. Okay, so that's how you calculate uh, the slope of the line to include two points, right? That's simple enough. Now we're going to make another assumption that time varies continuously in this particular case. So assume further that, so assume that T varies continuously so the limits of delta P over delta T as delta T go to zero. So because it's continuously 
occur in the system, um, delta t becomes smaller and smaller, so much so that we're going to take the limit of the um, this fractions with respect to the idea that delta t approaching to zero. Limits as delta t approaching zero of p of t plus delta t minus p of t over delta t equal to kp. Uh, because there's no uh, delta t on the right hand side, so you don't have to take any limit at all. And another way to write the limit of the um, slope of the secant line is that of the derivative, right, of the function p with respect to time t. So this is the definition, or the um, this is the definitions of the derivative, right. So this is dp, dt. So this indicate that the rate of change of the population with respect to time is proportional to the population, the current populations. Okay. So I want to quickly note that this is the rate of change of the populations over time. is proportional to the current population size. Okay, um, again, in this case, K has to be positive because we only consider the pre-productions uh, or newborn into the populations. So K has to be positive. So this is the populations uh, model, the very basic, simple population model um, that we are considering. Now for population growth, um, we're gonna take into account more details of population growth. Okay, suppose we know the population at some given time P0 at time T equal to T0. So this kind of, um, we call that the initial value, right? So this initial population at time t equal to t0. And we are interested in predicting the population p at some future time t equal to t1. In other words, we want to find the population's functions p of t, right, for t is between t0 and t1. That satisfies the initial values, okay. And to build up this model to come up with P of T, we're gonna make some assumptions. In this case, we're gonna take into account both birth rate and death rate, right? So the birth rate can be influenced by the infant mortality rate, attitude toward and uh, you know, availability of contraceptives, attitude toward abortion, healthcare during pregnancy, and that very is influenced by san sanitations in public health, wars, population, medicine, diet, and psycho psychological stress and anxiety. Right? But in general, we always make an assumption on both rate, birth rate and death rate and see what happened. All right, so assume during a small unit time period um, a percentage b uh, given in decimal number or given in decimal of the population is newly born and a percentage C, also given in decimal, of populations die. All right, so you take into account birth rate and death rate. All right, so the change in population P, um, delta P is equal to P of T plus delta T minus P of T 
now no longer only depends on case of p of t times delta t as the first problem that we consider. Now we take into account both birth rate and death rate. Okay, so now we have b times p times delta t minus c times p times delta t. And of course, this related to newborn into the populations. And this is the number of people died from the populations. Okay. Now, what we do is that on the right hand side, you see P and delta T is the common factor. So I'm going to do P of T plus delta T minus P of T equal to B minus C times P times delta T. And I'm going to divide both sides for delta T. We got P of T plus delta T minus P of T divided by um, delta T. This is equal to B minus C times P. All right. And we're going to play the same game as before because we consider a small unit time period. That is the delta T is going to approach zero, right? Because we can, 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 we are considering continuous time period, um, so the limits of the functions p of t plus delta t minus p of t divided by delta t as delta t approaches zero is equal to uh, b minus c times p. So instead of keep writing B minus C, I'm gonna let B minus C to be equal to some constant K, right? So I'm gonna let this equal to K times P. And again, in this K, the assumption is that K has to be positive. When K is positive, that means B minus C has to be positive. In other words, the birth rate has to be greater than the has to be greater than the death rate. Okay, it makes sense, right? Because if the birth rate is less than the death rate, then the entire population will die down eventually. Okay, so for when you take the limit of this particular functions, again, you're going to get the derivative of the populations over time. So that the PDT going to be equal to k times p for k is greater than zero. So if you notice, no matter what you do, uh, you may, um, if you assume just uh, the birth rate or you assume both birth rates and death rate occur in the model, you still come up with the same differential equations, right? The differential equation is that you have one side is the uh, one side of the equation consists of derivative and the other side consists of some uh, other function than derivative. All right. And this particular functions, uh, sorry, this particular equation subject to uh, the initial populations or satisfy the initial value. Right. So the initial conditions, initial conditions or value is that a p of t zero is equal to p sub zero. Right? So at an initial time, the population is uh, p sub zero. Now let's quickly solve for the solution of this differential equations. Um, the idea of this um, solution is uh, of the process of to obtain the solution is um, is very simple. We're gonna use just the idea of integral that we learn in calculus one and calculus two. All right. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna consider the functions, or sorry, the equation dpdt equal to k times p. All right. Now, what I'm gonna do is I divide both sides for p. All right. So I get one over p dpdt equal to k. Now I integrate post, I integrate both sides of this equation with respect to t. And when I do that, I get one over p dp equal to the integral of k dt. Again, k in this case is the constant. So on the left hand side, the antiderivative or the 
uh, the integral of one over p dp is going to give me ln of absolute value of p. And on the right hand side is the antiderivative of k dt. It's going to be k times t plus some constant because we are dealing with indefinite integrals. So that's why at the end, you need to have a plus constancy. So we can break the absolute value for P because P, the population is always positive. So that makes sense, right? So this is ln of P equal to KT plus constant C. Now, again, what are we looking for? We're looking for the value of P. So to obtain P, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise E on both sides of this equation. So that is E to the ln of P equal to E times KT plus C. So P now, so E and ln, I will cancel out and you're left with just the population P is equal to E to the KT times E to the C. This is just the law of exponent. Now C is a constant, therefore E to the C is a constant as well. To minimize the writing process, we're gonna let capital A equal to E to the C. So you have A times E to the KT. So this is the A times E to the KT, the general solutions to the differential equations. Okay. Now, most of the time, what we want to know is what is the value of A, okay? So, and how it's related to the initial values that given to you uh, earlier. So this is the initial conditions or the initial value. So we're gonna substitute that initial value into our general solutions. So substitute p of t0 equal to p0 into the general solutions. We get that p of 0 equal to a times e to the k times t0, right? Um, and we're going to divide both sides for e to the k t0 to obtain the value of a. So a becomes p0 over e k t0 or we can rewrite this as P0 times E to the negative KT0. And therefore the solutions is, so P is equal to um, A times E to the KT for A is equal to this term. So P0 times E to the negative KT0 times E to the KT or P0 equal to E to the negative KT0 plus KT. And we're going to take K as the common factor and we get P0 times E to the K times T minus T0. So the solution of this particular population growth model is of this form, P0 times E to the KT minus T0. And that is the reason this particular model is called exponential growth model because the solution is in exponential form. All right, so that is the only solution that we're going to derive from this, uh, from this lecture. All right, so for this functions, exponential functions is growing exponentially to infinity as t, or as time go to forever, right, to infinity which is unrealistic in so many cases, right? So in real life, um, there's no way our populations can, go, can grow to, um, to infinity. You have to take into account a lot of factors that is uh, the four sources, the land that they stay in, the population stay in, uh, a lot of information need to be taken into account. Um, in order to avoid this exponential growth, right? To kind of make the problem more realistic. And to do that, we need to refine the model, right? To reflect the limited growth, right? And this is where the model, uh, the logistic model coming in, right? So at this point, what we know is that the proportionality constant k 
is no longer a constant. But of functions of the population P. Right. Um, so in this case, we can use the following model that K is equal to R times M minus P for R is a positive constant as well. And M is called the carrying capacity. Um, so you can think about the carrying capacity is the maximum number of the populations that allowed in certain situations. For example, when you go into, when you access an elevator, there's always um, the carrying capacity. Let's say there's only 100 people can ride in the elevator, right? If you assist that number, the elevator will make some noise to tell you that it's reaching the carrying capacity. Um, so similar in this case, we have to take into account the maximum number of populations that these populations can get to, right? So um, if the populations is going beyond this carrying capacity, certain things needs to happen. Certain people need to leave um, the, uh, that particular populations, okay? Or the growth rate has to be decrease uh, tremendously, okay? So as the population increases, and get closer to M, which is the carry-on capacity, um, the rate K decreases. Makes sense, right? Um, so the differential equations now becomes the PDT equal to R times M minus P times P. Again, for R is greater than zero and M is the carrying capacity and the population has to always be less than the carrying capacity. So this is the um, differential equation for the um, logistic growth model. Okay. Um, so from this two uh, model, I'm gonna do some problems and see what happened. Right? So we have the solution to the exponential growth model, uh, but when we do with the logistic growth model, I'm gonna give you the solutions. Okay, so for example one, we have that the frog population in a small pond grows exponentially. The current population is 85 frogs and the relative growth rate is 18% per year. And there are three parts to the problem. Five, the first part is to find a function that models the number of frogs after T years. And B, find the projected population after three years. And the last part is to find the number of years required for the frog population to reach 600. All right, so the first part, A, so yeah, this is, um, so the frog population grows exponentially. So you have exponential growth model. And the populations is P equal to P zero times E to the K times T minus T zero. Okay. So if we look at the information given to us, you have the current population is 85 frogs. So P of zero equal to 85 instead of T of zero, or T sub zero. We don't know exactly T sub zero means, but we can actually denote the, um, the current population or the, uh, the beginning time or the initial time to be zero. It's easier for us to analyze the problem. So P of zero is equal to 85 and the growth rate K is equal to 80% or 0.18. Right, so therefore the function that models the number of frogs after T year, so the function that models the number of frog after T years 
is when I so p equal to 85 times e raised to the power k, which is 0.18 times t. So in this case, t sub zero will assume to be equal to zero. Right. And 85 is the current population or the initial populations. Now, using this model, we're going to make some predictions for the future. Right. In part B, we want to find the projected population after three years. So that is T is equal to three. We want to calculate the value of P. So after T equal to three years, the populations is, so P of three equal to 85 times E to the power of uh, 0.18 times three. And you can plug this into a calculator to help with the calculations. So after three years, you if you do the calculations correctly, you get about 146 frogs. I'm gonna get 145.86, but you round it up because it's, you know the whole the whole body. So you have 145, uh, 146 frogs after three years. Now the last part of the problem is to find the number of years required for the frog population to reach a second rift. All right, so the current populations or the future populations second rift, uh, we find t, right? So 600 equal to 85 times e to 0.18 times t, and we are looking for t, right? What we do now is divide the side for 85. So 600 divided by 85 equal to e to the power of uh, 0.18 times t, Um, now to, uh, to, to get T by itself, what I do is I'm gonna take LN on both sides of the equation. Why is LN? Because the base here is base E or LN is the log of base E. So I get um, LN of E raised to 1.18 T and LN and E cancel out and you're left with just 0.18 times T. And to get T, I'm gonna divide it both sides for 0.18. I got one over 0.18 times LN of 600 over 85. And I put this into the calculations to help me with, um, uh, put this into the calculator to help me with the calculations. And if you do the calculations correctly, you get 10.86. So about 10.86, and so the unit here is years. So after 10 years or more than 10 years, you're gonna get the population of frog in this pond to be All right, so that's how you do the calculation related to exponential growth model. Um, in the next example, we look at the logistic growth model, right? So in this case, the logistic growth model is given by this particular, um, functions. So P of T is equal to 3640 divided by 1 plus 25 times E to the negative 0 0.004 T. Um, a few notes here. So this number, when you see this type of problem, uh, this type of functions, the number on the numerator is the carrying capacity. Um, and the growth rate is going to be 0.004. Okay. And so let me quickly note here. So R in this logistic growth model is going to be 0.04. Okay. Um, the initial, um, let me be careful here. So the, all right. The initial uh, number of population is 25. Right? So P of zero is going to be equal to 25. All right, so identify the initial populations. Um, uh, 
um, so let, let me be careful here. Let me be careful here. So the, all right, so just the carrying capacity and the growth rate. All right, so now there are multiple parts to the problem. First, identify the initial populations. That is t equal to zero. What is the population at time equal to t zero? t equal to zero, right? So um, identify. the initial populations. So P of zero is equal to 3640 divided by one plus 25 times E to the zero. Okay, um, because T is equal to zero. So, so you have 3640 divided by 26. And we're going to get 140 for the initial number of um, populations, All right? The next part is what will be the bird population in five years? So populations in T equal to five years. All right, so P of five is equal to 3640 divided by one plus 25 times e to the negative 0 0.04 times five. All right, so this is, um, now you put this again into a calculator to help with the calculations, see what happened. So if you do the calculations correctly, you can get um, 170, the populations is 170 after five years. You actually get about one for uh, 69.55, um, but round it up to the whole number. So it's gonna be 170. The, the next part is what will be the populations in 150 years and what will be the populations in the 500 years. So the populations in T equal to 150 years. So P of 150 is equal to 3640 uh, divided by one plus 25 times E to the negative 0 0.04 times 150. Right. Now you put this into the calculator as well. And you're going to get about one uh, 3428. Why? So the populations reach to 3,428 birds. And again, the populations um, in T equal to 500 years, uh, it's going to be, so P of 500 equal to 3640 divided by one plus 25 times E to the negative 0.04 times 500. Um, Again, put this into a calculator. And this is get very close to 3640. Right, so it's approximately equal to 3640. So this tell you that the carrying capacity is 3640, right? Because as you, as time go to infinity, right, you take time period longer and longer, uh, the population will reach the carrying capacity. Okay. So that makes sense for, for our calculations. Um, so that is for logistic growth model, right? So that's it for me. Um, in this problem, we look at um, two different models uh, uh, in continuous time period. Um, the first one is the exponential growth model and the second one is the logistic growth model. You have seen this two model in the case of discrete models already, but now in the form of differential equations. All right, so that's it for me. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.